to see what's new in our nation's capital, Mike and I asked DC beer bloggers, the loggerheads, to show us around town. Let's see if there's been any change we can believe in. Hey! hey what's happening? All right. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead. Show the way. DC has a great craft beer scene and advancing beer culture, and it all begins here at the Brick Skeller. Uh, years ago, there was really no other place to get a wide variety of beer uh, other than here. Everybody who's interested in beer in this city knows about the Brick Skeller, has had great nights here, and can talk about it, and meets here all the time. The Brick Skeller was opened by my wife, Diane Alexander, by her grandfather in October of 1957, with uh, 51 different beers on the menu. But uh, right now, we're around 1,000 right now, which is actually kind of low for us. Maybe 1,100. I got a lot of beers I don't put on the menu, like some of the really old stuff. And, you know, but for what's actually on the menu is probably around 1,000. I think the most we've ever had is about in the low 1400s. It, it, the number constantly goes up and down and up and down. You know, the menu will never, ever be right. By the time I finally actually do get it printed, I've lost seven beers and gotten eight more back in. So it's just, yeah, it's like, it's like pushing a puddle of oil. <laughs> Pretty much the world outside of California learned about craft beer in this place here. Ron Barche and Bill Kovaleski, who went on to form Victory Beer. They started out as uh, Brick's got a beer tasting customer. So uh, Ron Barche spoke German. They were coming to our tastings, and he was like, you know what, we need to get into this. It's hard to get a lot of tourists, because there's tons of hotels around here. A lot of people really want to come to the Brick's Gallery. They've heard about it, or maybe they just ask the concierge, where should I go? And they're like, go there. And then uh, a lot of people, yeah, town looking for good beer. And then a lot of the college kids. You know, the people that live in the apartment building next door to us don't know who we are, but uh, diplomats visiting from Poland do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the people that come from all around the world know about us. Yeah. Sure. After our visit, Dave Alexander surprisingly sold the historic space. But while the Brick Scaler's future remains unknown, its influence on DC's craft beer scene is indisputable. It's a cool So it matches my business card. <laughs> well, we're at Meridian Pint, which is the newest member of the craft beer scene here in DC. Let's check it out. <laughs> How's that? What are you doing? That seemed kind of Do you contrived. need more information? Located in the up-and-coming Columbia Heights neighborhood, Meridian Pite offers patrons the chance to pour their own beer and pay by the ounce. We're at 14th in Rhode Island, and behind us here is Church Key, upstairs in Birch and Barley, which is a restaurant downstairs, but they're both part of the same establishment that was open last fall in October of 2009. And uh, it's a great place, lots of beer, good food, and it's a place that anybody coming to D.C. looking for beer needs to stop by and check out. Their draft selection is 50 beers on draft at any given moment. They have five casts, which is great for hardcore beer fans who are looking for that cast scale. And their bottle list numbers 500. The main thing that distinguishes Church Key from a lot of other places is the true respect they have for the beer here. They not only keep beers at different temperatures that they're supposed to be at, but they also have the appropriate glassware for each style of beer and each type of beer that they, they serve. One of the most interesting ways I think that we approach beer here is doing it by, by flavors rather than by, say, style or region. We have seven different flavor categories. And then the first thing is that it has to taste good. It has to be handcrafted. Uh, we don't have any of the um, kind of macro brews, um, be it domestic or imported. We're going for smaller breweries making smaller batches of really flavorful and interesting beers. But not everything is, has to be, you know, 12%. We have as many crisp and refreshing light beers as we do stronger, barrel-aged stouts. I think the biggest surprise has been the clientele um, and how varied it's been. One of the things that was of some concern at first was that, you know, since we weren't going to be serving the beers that most people go out to drink on a Friday or Saturday night, is that we would maybe not attract a larger crowd, and that we would just have the kind of the beer geeks and the aficionados or the 
the high-minded, the foodies, and things like that. But I think we've realized that we're able to get everybody, literally everybody, something in their hand that they're gonna they're gonna love. But I think what we offer here is it's like obviously you can go out and get you know fucked up all the time anywhere lots of places serve alcohol but if you can come here and do that and actually like think about what you're drinking at the same time i think we're just kind of elevating the experience there's no reason to drink boring beer i mean there's everything out there is so readily available now that we can all kind of join up as a community of people who demand um, greatness from from our beers Cheers. Woo-hoo. Thanks for having oh, wow. us. Wow, yeah, look at all that. Oh, it's so good right so now. So, what have you got? This is a Guden Corollas. Ah, okay. Great Belgian brewery. Yes. My, probably my favorite beer in the world. Whoa. Yeah. That is a bold that statement. Is... Not this particular beer, but certainly the brewery. The brewery. Favorite brewery of all time. Mine changes like weekly. Because I'm trying new things, and because like my the sun is different, and the and the clouds and the rain and stuff happens, and I feel different, and my body <laughs> the like winds yeah. turn. Oh yeah. <laughs> what I ate that day changes how you I feel. You are about. such a beer whore. You just every day could be a different brewery. Thanks for watching, and until next time, check out all our episodes, new and old, on iTunes or at BeerNationShow.com. Mm-hmm.